Oh yes, today we're going to be talking about generating random numbers in C++. As you guys already probably know, I will be using the symbols that I will put on the slides, so feel free to stop the video right here and see them if you see them for the first time. Now, to the topic of random numbers. Before we start talking about how to generate them in C++, we actually have to talk a little bit about what are random numbers at all. We are used to thinking about random numbers as uh, being generated by a certain action that is essentially random, like a throw of a dice or a flip of a coin. Of course, this is all under the assumption that there is free will and we can actually flip a coin randomly, but let's maybe not go into that here. When, when we talk about random numbers here, we mean the numbers that are basically just hard to predict. They don't necessarily have to be random. Uh, most of the times when we speak about generating random numbers in, in any programming language, we're actually talking about the so-called pseudo-random numbers. The pseudo-random numbers, the name is uh, like this because they're not really random, they just look random enough to us. Like They're generated in a complex enough pattern that the pattern looks random and it can satisfy certain characteristics of the randomness that we want them to have. There are generally multiple algorithms to generate these type of pseudo-random numbers. Um, I will list them here on the slide, uh, but we will really not go into detail into those uh, right now. One of the reasons is because I'm not an expert in generating good random numbers, and this course is not about that too. So if you really want to look into more details about that, you can read a book. I linked it in the bottom of the slide or just uh, uh, read this technical report that is a little bit advanced, but I think it gives a pretty nice overview of the different ways of how to generate random numbers. The question that I will try to answer here is how do you use these different generators uh, in C++, of course. And uh, it has been available from C++11 on. Uh, now we actually have this header, random, that uh, implements all the possible uh, distributions that we would maybe want to use. First of all, there is a great page on cppreference.com on uh, uh, how these different generators of random numbers are used in C++. Um, the link is on the slide, uh, so feel free to go there and read all of it. It's a little bit in-depth, and uh, but please don't be intimidated and try to read it all and uh, kind of understand uh, what it is in, in connection to this lecture. Now, generally speaking, it works this way. We need three things. We need the random device, which can generate random or pseudo-random numbers. Um, it's actually implementation defined. Sometimes uh, if your hardware supports this, it can actually generate, well, the actual random numbers or what is called actual random numbers. Again, big topic. But it can also use the pseudo-random generator algorithms that we discussed before for that device. And that device basically just needs to generate, it's a source of our randomness. It has to just generate some random integers. Now, given that device, we can actually pass it into a so-called random number engine, which is actually what implements the different algorithms for generating our, our numbers. Finally, we pass this engine into a distribution, and these distributions are the endpoint that we will actually be using. So, for example, if you want um, a random number which is uniformly distributed between, say, 1 and 10, you can create a uniform integer distribution and you will get an integer from 1 to 10 uniformly distributed. Uh, if you don't know what is uniformly distributed, this is basically, it means that every number that can be generated from this range can be generated with equal or very close to equal probability. And the same holds for multiple other distributions. Uh, so all of those things are actually already implemented and you can use them out of the box. Now let's look at an example of how to do that. For that we again create a small main function and in that main function we create this random device. This random device um, is now basically just an instance of the random device uh, type. And uh, let's create uh, one of the engines and this engine has a very weird name but it's basically one of those uh, names defined in the in the random header, feel free to go to cppreference.com and see for yourself what it is. And the numbers that are there are basically just representing the parameters with which that particular engine is initialized. 
So for now, we'll just create that one, but you can generally use any other for the purposes of this particular course. And if you ever have to generate really good random numbers, you will have to go dive deep into the topic and understand what good actually means in your particular use case. Uh, so we generate this engine and we pass it this random device. And this is some new syntax that we haven't seen before. Um, you can see that we have this object random device, but we use it as if it is a function. And this is something that is called a functor in C++. Again, this we will be discussing later in the course. And when we do, I will link it somewhere here on the screen. But uh, for now, just uh, trust me that this is possible. And at this point, you probably will just have to remember that this is the way it's done. I'm sorry about that. And now that we have a random engine uh, at our disposal, we can create a random distribution. And here, let's just create a uniform real distribution. Again, go to cppreference.com to see all the possible ones. So we uh, want a distribution that generates a random number from 23 to 42, for example, and uh, we want all of the numbers in this range to have equal probability. Now, if you run this program, the Couts will trigger and the numbers will be generated. So in this particular case, I will generate just five numbers and the output will be something like this. And of course, these are random numbers. So if you run this program, you will get a different set of values. And I definitely urge you to actually run this program. Now, if you try to search the internet for how to generate random numbers in C++, you will probably very quickly get to the, uh, to the suggestion of using the rand function. Now, I want to explicitly address what is wrong with the rand function. Well, let's first start what it is, right? In case you didn't hear about it, rand is a function that actually comes from C, so it's available from C as the lib header in C++, and it was actually the only option to generate random numbers in C++ before C++11 came to be. The typical use of, uh, of the rand function looks something like this. So somewhere in the main function, we initialize our randomness by uh, using the srand or srand function, and we usually pass it some seed. And what people usually use is they use uh, the current time because that is kind of random. And now that we have initialized the randomness with this rand function, we can actually use the rand function to generate our random numbers, which will be just integers from zero to max random number. The problem with all of this, well, there are actually multiple problems with this. The first one is that um, you can see that there are no objects here, right? These are just functions that manipulate some global state and global state is always bad. Whenever you have a global state, it means that if you change it in one place of your program, you can have unexpected consequences in another part of your program. And these are really hard to debug. So people move away from having a global state more and more and more. And you will see this a lot in C++, that we go away from the global state and have very nicely encapsulated parts of the program that do a certain thing and do it in one place of our program at once and not all over the place. So try to avoid global state. And here you see you cannot avoid a global state because that's what SRAND and RAND actually use. Now, the second issue is that there are really no guarantees to the quality of the random numbers that come out of the RAND function. And to understand what is the quality of a random number, you will have to read those books that I've linked in a couple of slides before. And that is a big problem. If you really need a certain guarantee on your pseudo-random number generator, you can't get it here. So you will have to implement your own algorithms that are now implemented in the random header in order to guarantee this randomness that you, that you so desire. So all in all, if you see it somewhere in the code, don't be afraid, now you know how it works, but most of the times you just have to use the random header and whatever stuff is defined there. And that's it. Uh, that's all you need to know to generate random numbers in C++. See you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.